the Adams family. Cousin Bleak was such a difficult subject. You're painting him from memory, and it's a magnificent likeness. Superb! Thank you, darling. But there's something about the eyes. I just can't seem to get them. That lid droops just a bit too much. The right eye or the left? The middle one. <laughs> Perfect. That's the look that used to get the girls. <laughs> Darling, children are going to be late for their birthday party. Would you ring for Lurch? You rang. Yes, Lurch. Would you get the children, please? Hurry! Wait, honey! Oh, what's that, darling? Harold's birthday present, a tarantula. <laughs> Oh, dear, Pugsley. He's so generous. That old Adam's tradition, a heart of gold. Well, we'll have to have it gift wrapped. Let's see now. Uh, a birthday present. Festive occasion. I think black would be appropriate. Black it is, my dear. Here, darling. Let me do that. You're all thumbs. Wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> Lurch, please take the children to the car. Yes, madam. Where are they going? Wee! <laughs> the Pomeroy boys' birthday party. You mean those people with the white picket fence and the pink geraniums? How could you? There's something to what he says, Morticia. They are a bit peculiar. <laughs> I bet they've got daisies in their backyard. Please, don't make me ill. <laughs> no, no, no. We must be tolerant of our neighbors. Thank you, Thing. <laughs> there you are, Pugsley. Your mother is still the world's best tarantula wrapper. Now, remember, children, not every family is as fortunate as we are. Not everyone has a beautiful old house like ours. And a car with all the right sounds and smells. Let's be modest about our advantages. We'll be good. I know you will, darling. I'm sure Harold will love his present. Bye, <laughs> right, children. Have a good time. Pugsley, only five pieces of cake now. Well, I guess I'd better go in and finish knitting my tea cozy. Morticia. Don't move. <laughs> Remember how I carried you across the threshold that first time? Not only across the threshold, but through the living room and up the stairs and into our room. And I dropped you only once. <laughs> I'll swear these fish seem to know when you're going to feed them. They're a lot more aware than people give them credit for being. That's breeding. <laughs> There's no waste with piranha. <laughs> Darling, I think the children are home. I wonder what the children are doing back so soon. Are you home from the party so early? What happened? Was there trouble? A small altercation. <laughs> Harold Pomeroy said his family was better than our family. He said we were a bunch of kooks. <laughs> kooks? <laughs> oh, we couldn't have met it. Of course not. How could the child fail to recognize character when he sees it? I told you the Pomeroys were no good. They're neat little petunia patches. Riffraff. I tell you, they're nothing but riffraff. Lurch, you better take the children to their rooms. Yes, madam. 
I always did suspect those white plaster ducks out on the lawn. <laughs> Darling, some people have a twisted sense of beauty. <laughs> behavior like that begins with the parents. Well, what are you going to do about it? Just stand there and take it? Certainly not. I'm going to send Farmer in a salting letter. <laughs> Darling, I don't think we should lend our name to such a thing. He could sign it a friend. An insulting letter signed a friend. That would be novel. I think we should turn the other cheek. No, when people insulted me, I always turned the other cheek. Well? I ran out of cheeks. <laughs> now there's only one way to settle this. Uncle Fester! Uncle Fester, please, not that. But Morticia, the family honor. He's right, Morticia, the family honor. You'll have to challenge Pomeroy to a duel. No, I'd rather shoot him in the back. <laughs> Uncle Fester, that is not the honorable way. I know, but it's the safe way. <laughs> Uncle Fester, I'm ashamed of you. And Adams doesn't know the meaning of the word fear. I do. I'll shoot him in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Fester, remember the Adams name. It'll have to be a duel. What sort? With victory going to the swiftest, the cunningest, the deadliest. I'll shoot him in the back. <laughs> Wait. How about pistols? Well, that's different. It, it, does he get one, too? Naturally. Loaded? You get one bullet apiece. In the back. <laughs> we have visitors. It's Mr. Pomeroy. Little Harold is with him. See, they've come to make peace. I hope not. <laughs> I'll handle this. Remember, you took care of the gas inspector. <laughs> Darling. Why don't we handle this together? A Pomeroy does not slam gates. I didn't slam it, Dad. A Pomeroy does not lie, I... But, Dad... <laughs> Come along. <laughs> I'm Cecil B. Pomeroy. Perhaps you've heard of me? I'm in oil. Oh, boiling? <laughs> Lubricating. I wouldn't make light of this. Look at my son, Harold. <laughs> Fine-looking boy. Nice eyes. Well, uh, one of them, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and that's what your hoodlum offspring did with his fists. Our son used his fists. All those karate lessons. Wasted. <laughs> I'll thank you both to stop joking. My son has been sorely wounded, and I demand an apology. Very well, Mr. Pomeroy, if it'll make you happy. I apologize. Not from you, from that pugnacious child of yours. Him! Children? I understand, Pugsley, that you and Harold engaged in a little tiff this afternoon. All I did was tear his jacket a little. You tore my family crest. Well, you wouldn't have got a sock in the eye if you hadn't said your family was better than our family. Our family is better. It is not. Children, children. I think you ought to apologize to Harold. I'm sorry I punched you in the eye, Harold. <laughs> she must have hit him while his back was turned. In the eye? I don't know. It's possible. Remember my cousin, Curdle? Ah, yes. Well, sorry about the whole mess, Pomeroy. Yes, won't you come in and have a cup of tea, and the children can play together and forget all about their little spat? Well, uh... Do come in. I'll let you ride my Jaguar. Can I, Dad? All right, uh, but stay in the yard. Don't go into the street. Oh, we never run the Jaguar out in the street. Come on, Harold. I'm so glad we got this thing straightened out. Uh, yes. Uh, we're not only neighbors, but I find we have some adjoining land along the county line. <laughs> you got stuck, too. Uh, yes. That uh, doesn't happen to the Pomeroys, usually. It's one of the things we're proud of. Matter of fact, uh, we asked Professor Sims to trace our family genealogy back to... Uh, Merciful heavens, what was that? Bugsley's Jaguar. Bugsley's Jaguar? You mean that your child is having my son ride a wild animal? Don't worry. When Fang makes that noise, nobody rides him. 
there, you see. They've already found something else to amuse them. Nothing like the laughter of happy children, is there, Pablo? Well, my son has little time for frivolity. After all, he's being trained to follow in the family... Excuse me. <laughs> is that thing real? Everything in our home is real, Mr. Pablo. Taste! <laughs> There's quite a story behind that trophy, Pomeroy. Cousin Farouk was a skin diver. He dived out of a rowboat in an attempt to spear a rare species of eel. At the same moment, a big fish swept up from the depths, also after the eel. They were on a collision course. The rest is taxidermy. <laughs> Little Pugsley is teaching Harold how to handle dynamite cats. <laughs> dynamite? <laughs> there, you see? Their little spat of this afternoon is all gotten. We adults could learn a lot from our children, eh, Pomeroy? <laughs> More tea, Mr. Pomeroy? Uh, um, no, thanks. <laughs> that thing bit me! Oh, I'm sure you're mistaken, Mr. Pomeroy. Our birds would never attack living things. <laughs> Children, stop playing with that trap door. Uncle Fester just greased it. A trap door? In the playroom for our gala. It's a family heir. Sorry, Harold. Don't show me through the trap door. Adams, what the devil have they been doing? Can't you see? Playing. Don't. Harold, oh, Adams, I never want to see these two little creeps in my home again. And I promise you that never again will I set foot in this, this menagerie. In that case, sir, I'll have to ask you to leave. Ask me. I can hardly wait to get out. <laughs> Merch, show Mr. Pomeroy out. <laughs> <laughs> Adamses, you are kooks. <laughs> Calling our children creeps. Blowing off about his ancestry, his professor, his genealogist. I could really have stopped him with a few things about the Adams ancestry. Why didn't you? I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> right. You're right. I should have told him, but it's been so long since I've looked into the family records. Anybody can tell what kind of a family we are. But to him, we're peasants. We need proof. <laughs> proof. And I'll ram it down Mr. Blowhard's throat. I'll get you your proof, darling. I'm going to call in a genealogist. We'll get his Professor Sims. He can trace our family tree. Trace it? I know where it is. Uncle Fester sits in it every day. from Professor Sims, the genealogist. He says, working on a family tree like yours should be a real challenge. <laughs> we better get all the Adams family heirlooms and records together. My dear, I've already dug up a lot of material. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, the old Adams barn. Darling, that's Aunt Blemish. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> you may be right. <laughs> Oh, I don't recognize those two at all. That's only one. Of course. Grandpa Slurp. Should have known by his buck teeth. And receding chin. He was a handsome devil. Remember this picture? Cousin. 
golden clot. Just before they threw the switch. My, he was photogenic. I'll never forget the day the judge imposed sentence. Clotty stood there, head high, shoulders back, said, it's a bum rap. And Adams to the end. Done, we better get these things ready. That does it. I doubt that I could have made one more trip to the attic. I hope the genealogist got enough material to work with. You know, I think we should use more of these lovely things in the living room. I didn't know Grand Uncle Grizzly was a traitor. Oh, yes. But he only did it for money. Uh, <laughs> is Professor Sims still working in the library? Yes, darling. I think you better take these things into him. I'll get the doorbell, Lurch. <laughs> Turner's gift. Is there something wrong with it? I don't know. Weren't you surprised when you opened it? I sure was. It was empty. Oh. <laughs> oh. Pugsley? Your birthday present escaped. <laughs> you better let Harold pick out something else. Okay, come on up to my room, Harold, and pick out what you want. I'm not supposed to stay. A call for Master Pomeroy. Come along, children. Uh, did you return the present? Yes, and I'm getting out of here as fast as I can. No, no. Uh, tell him it was all a mistake. A horrible mistake. Yes. Uh, act nice and friendly. <laughs> Yes, friendly. <laughs> and they have some land next to mine, and my man thinks there's oil on it. Just act nice and friendly, and I'll be over there soon. My dad said it was all a horrible mistake. I'm to be nice and friendly. Oh, that's lovely. Pugsley, you must let Harold play with your octopus. Not that friendly. <laughs> oh, don't be a sissy. <laughs> well, all right. I'll even show you how to juggle meat cleavers. Morticia, Professor Sims feels he's on the trail of something. Oh, I do hope it's something gloomy. <laughs> For a moment, I thought there might be some relationship to the New England Adamses, John and John Quincy. People often assume that. Great source of embarrassment to us. We spell our name with two D's. The additional D makes the difference. Good heavens. Do you suppose that's the reason Mr. Pomeroy thought there was something wrong with us? Is <laughs> something wrong? Huh? Oh, oh no, no, no. No, well, that is, uh, well, things do seem a bit off. I've traced Mrs. Adams back to the early colonial days at Salem, Massachusetts. Interesting place, Salem. They burned witches there, you know. Yes. I'm certainly glad they don't do that today. <laughs> uh, I found a family of Adamses living in a native village far up the Amazon River, deep in the jungle. But the uh, head of the family seems to have disappeared. Completely? Usually, they just shrink them. <laughs> <laughs> and I've established that one ancestor back in 270 A.D. Use this torch to set fire to the library at Alexandria, Egypt. Mahmoud Kali Pasha Adams, the fire bug of the Bosphorus. You should tell Mr. Pomeroy about him. Oh, no, Pomeroy background has quite a few unusual characters, too. Really? But I do think that professional ethics forbids me discussing it. Of course. Otherwise, I would tell you of Pegleg Pomeroy, the scourge of Denver, <laughs> Erwin Pomeroy, the hanging judge, and Habersham Pomeroy, the bluebeard of Boston. <laughs> well, what do you know? It's quite an impressive background. I don't blame him for feeling superior. Darling, sometimes you can just misjudge people. <laughs> <laughs> Come in. Please, have a cigar. Oh, no, thank you. 
Mr. Pomeroy. Oh, uh, you know, I believe I owe you both an apology. Not at all. It's we who owe you an apology. And I can understand your pride after learning about your family background. <laughs> <laughs> a lovely rug. Thank you. Do sit down. Oh, thank you, thank you. Delighted. The children are upstairs playing with little Pugsley's octopus. Live, of course. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Every young boy should have a live octopus. We do think alike, don't we? It's true, true. And as a little peace offering, I'd like to take that awful acreage that we both got stuck with off your hands. The same price you paid for it, of course, a thousand an acre. Let's not talk about business. Let's talk about our illustrious families. Why didn't you tell us about Peg Leg Pomeroy? Yeah, I beg your pardon. Oh, come, Mr. Pomeroy. We know all about him. Quite a streak of skullduggery in the Pomeroy line, isn't there? Well, I... And don't tell us you're going to deny knowing anything about grape shot, Pomeroy. Uh, well, Pomeroy is a very common name. Isn't he the modest one? I, I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Aren't you proud of being descended from a pirate? Uh, I'll pay you 2,000 an acre. Isn't he generous? Bluebeard Pomeroy would be proud of him. Bluebeard Pomeroy. 3,000 an acre. Well, if you insist. Yeah, my check will be here first thing in the morning. <laughs> you come back, pale face. Oh, isn't that sweet? Get me away from these barbarians. You, he's had a tiring day. Harold, the Adams family is every bit as good as ours. Well, Black Bart and Bloody Adams, true. You see? <laughs> And now say goodbye to your little friend. Bye. Goodbye, Harold. Goodbye. Goodbye. Pomeroy. Pomeroy. Goodbye. Harold, you forgot to say goodbye to Kitty. No. Now, Harold, we must say goodbye to Kitty. Here, Kitty, here, Kitty. No. No. What happened to the Pomeroy's? <laughs> He's businessmen. Always in such a hurry. <laughs> really nice of Pomeroy to take all that worthless land off our hands. How do you know it's worthless, darling? Uh, one thing's certain, there's no oil on it. It's been checked and rechecked. I guess he just wanted to apologize for calling us kooks. <laughs> Thank you. Taste of people. <laughs>